Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all doing well, staying safe. Last video, I got a handful of uploads asking if I could talk more about engineering management and how I got into it. I'm currently an engineering manager at a medium-sized software company. So for this video, I thought it'd be good just to share a little bit more about my experiences and go over more of the manager side of software development. Let's get started. Let's dive straight into the first part. I wanna go over three three very important responsibilities that you have to go through and take on before you're considered for engineering management. These are from my own personal experience, but they're pretty standard in the industry. So I will make an assumption that you're probably a software developer in IC, you're super solid at your work, and you're thinking about what it takes to get into potentially leadership roles or maybe even management roles. You have to exhibit three, from my experience, three specific things. The first, first very basic responsibility that you should take on before getting into management is the ability to mentor someone. You're probably already very technically capable, but having a mentor-mentee relationship is really gonna be your first human-to-human -human relationship that you'll be evaluated on. So how well you onboard your mentee, how well your mentee contributes to the team, and how effective you can really transfer your knowledge, being a good mentor is step number one. The second, second very important responsibility that you have to take on is the ability to lead a project. When I say project here, I'm not talking about something that you can finish in two weeks or a month. I'm really talking about multi-quarter projects that last six months or maybe even a year. Leading a project like this is no joke. Don't get me wrong, it's very, very hard. Once you're a project lead, you're gonna develop a lot of very important skills. One skill you're gonna develop is that the project is so long that you're most likely not gonna be able to do it on your own. You might be working with one engineer or two engineers for your specific project. So you're gonna get a little bit of practice of delegating work to other people. Another important skill you're gonna develop for a project that's this big is that you're gonna be forced to really practice your communication. When a project is this long, it's not just an engineering project. So I guarantee you're gonna be interacting with a lot of other departments product managers, designers, project management, everyone. So this is really gonna push your communication skills as well. Overall, once you become a project lead, you really, really have to push your non-technical skills. You really have to exhibit strong people skills, strong soft skills, and it's a very big responsibility, but also commonly this is a prerequisite before getting into management. So say the company has a big project, I have this project, it's gonna take three engineers, it's gonna take one year, hand over. The third, third and final responsibility that you should take on before getting to engineering management is the ability to be a tech lead. The major difference between a tech lead and a project lead is that as a tech lead, you're now responsible for multiple streams of work. So remember, if you're assigned a project, you're a project lead, you're doing one stream of work, you need to get that project done. Once you take on this third responsibility of a tech lead, you're actually overseeing multiple projects. As a tech lead, you're not gonna be the one actually coding as much or making progress on the projects. You're gonna be working with project leads and they're gonna be running the projects. But you, as a tech lead, you have new additional responsibilities. You have to make sure no one's blocked. You have to not get in the way and you're still measured on the overall effectiveness of your team. Being a technical lead is really the last major responsibility before getting into an engineering management. A lot of the times the roles overlap a little bit, but once you get into the manager side of things, you have a whole new set of responsibilities. So let's do a recap and go over the three major responsibilities again. Most likely in software development, you have to go through these responsibilities before even considering management. The first responsibility is being able to mentor someone. The second responsibility is being able to execute a long-term project. And finally, the third and very important responsibility is being able to technically lead a team. Before I sign off, I wanna spend a little bit of time and talk about the split career track in software development. This was made popular by a lot of big tech companies, but the idea of this is that when you start your first job as a software developer, you'll become a junior level developer, mid-level senior, but there will be a specific point in time where you can choose between a technical path or a more managerial path. If you go down the technical path, you usually hear 
titles like staff engineer, principal engineer, or fellow. If you go down the manager path, you usually hear titles like engineering manager, engineering director, or VP of engineering. The one thing I want to reiterate is that this whole concept of a split path between engineering and management, it's really, really only sponsored by technical companies. So I've said this before, you always have to compare in the same context. You have to compare apples to apples. If you work as a software developer for a nonprofit, it's very different than working as a software developer at a large tech company. If you work as just a contractor, or maybe you work at a marketing company helping out with their programming, they're not gonna offer you this nice, fancy split career track. Time to close out this video. My last recommendation is that if you haven't tried to take on these three responsibilities before, I would really recommend you do so. If you're a superstar coder, you're really good at making an impact individually, maybe it's time to try to expand yourself a little bit. And these three responsibilities are a really good way to push yourself. So again, mentoring someone, leading a long-term project, or technically leading a team, these are three very basic responsibilities to not only push yourself, but also make yourself get a feeling of what you like. If you really like being a team lead, maybe you should go into management. If you really don't like mentoring people, if you really don't like leading a project, maybe you gotta stay in a more technical route and not get into management. So the worst thing that could happen for trying this is just you learn more. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Please give me a like, please share the video. Please ask me any questions you want in the comments. This is all still very new to me. I've only been on this manager track for about a year and a half now. So I'll share with you things as I learn them. But again, I'm no better into this and I'm learning as I go. Please like the video again and hope it was helpful. All right, hope everyone stays safe. Enjoy the week, enjoy the weekend. Take care of yourself. All right, later.